is there a a chain you know that that's what even if it's regional like are there any other are there any grocery stores that you would say yeah i would trust going to that place well i mean i don't think it's really the grocery store um you know because it, it they have a lot of different um a lot of different products here this is an interesting story so i have a a friend he's a, kind of out in the chicago area and uh he's got he's got his own beef beef he's producing beef and he decided he was going to start up a retail he wanted a retail location so he goes to these he's like scoping out all these strip these strip malls right and uh goes in and there's a, a pick and save. The one he finally decides on is a great location on the on the right street and everything. There's a pick and save just like down the way a little ways. So um, he's wanting to rent the space and they're asking him what for. They get blocked. Like I, I'm not sure exactly what the legal terminology is, but they won't rent to him because pick and save is owned by Kroger. And they have a, I know something turned into, you know, a, an agreement that nobody, no producers, meat, egg, milk, no no podunk farmer is going to come in and set up shop within X amount of, you know, distance from any pick and save, you know? Oh, shit. Yeah. So he gets he gets blocked there, and then he also gets, like, gets pushback from the, uh, from the landowner, or the, the tenant. The, yeah, the landlord. And so it was... I was asking him, I was like, well, who owns it? And he's like, well, Pick and Save is owned by Kroger. I was like, well, who owns that? Wouldn't you know it? It's like you go to the top, and it's all owned by these large... Private equity fucking assholes. BlackRock, Vanguard, Berkshire Hathaway. I mean, there's... there's, And so, and then you look at... So it's like, to me, I'm like, well, why the hell are they... Like, why would you care that Farmer Bob is, like, trying to sell some hot dogs down from you? You know? And it's because they... There, it's uh, the food industry is getting more and more centralized, and like people, uh, you know, to me, this is like the most dangerous thing that's happening in our country of anything, because it comes down to if you are well fed, you are strong, and if you're not, you're weak. And our food system, like we are giving it away. It's been given away. I mean, you look at like the beef industry in general. Eighty six percent of the beef that are processed in the United States are controlled. They go through four four different companies. They're bottlenecked. Two of those companies are Brazilian owned. You said 86%? 86%. Jesus. Two of those are Brazilian owned. And I mean, they've got some, there's some dirty ties there. Yeah. You know, in with these like Southern cartels and shit. Like yeah. there's some, I've heard, I've heard stories that who owns this? You look at like Smithfield, you look at who owns Smithfield. Smithfield is owned by the Shineway Group, I believe, which is like a giant butchery, chain in china like the pork and chicken industry dude i mean so here's our food system right and you're a warrior like you know you know how these how these things work and it's like we have gotten so far and so detached from our food system and like we're just living in la la land looking at these devices i mean geez people are like dying because they walk into a window well because they're selling their you know they're looking at the, just believe everything everybody tells them and it's like our food system is gone. Like go go to a Walmart. Like look at the condition of the bodies. Yeah. You know? And this is like a it's a to me, I think this is the biggest thing because and it all really comes down to like, man, if you're like if you're eating Cheetos and drinking Mountain Dew, go to McDonald's, buy just get rid of the bun, eat that patty. Even if it, you're that's a dog shit patty, I don't care. It's better than what you're eating now. And then if you have financial means, continue to split those hairs and, and eat nutrient-dense foods. Because the fact of the matter is nutrient-dense foods, it's proven, increases brain cognition. And it's like, well, who wouldn't benefit from more brain cognition? Like the world, we're full, it's full of problems. What's the value of being able to solve your problems, you know? Yeah. And so I think it's a, re it's a really important thing that people you know think about it and yeah. you know that's it's our it's our strength yeah you know food no, I, and shelter yeah no i agree i mean it you know and, and i think it's it's connected to everything too which i think is is crucial for people to realize is that you know it, it's the obvious health benefits but you know the, the brain cognition thing is one 
having a strong military similarly or just having a strong society you know if if the entire society is eating really really shitty food and and not their brains aren't working right yeah. and they're sick all the fucking time and they're overweight a they're they're the obvious is they're nowhere near as productive as they could be the other side of that coin is the healthcare industry is, is that you know one of the biggest hotbed political topics in our country is is healthcare and you know how to reduce costs and blah like but but it's based on a system that you know 50 years ago you know 80 years ago however long when it first kind of came to to fruition was based on a society that was far more healthy like there were there were more healthy people than there were sick yeah. and so the numbers could at least add up like now between obesity and cancer and all the other bullshit that plagues our society like there there is no formula that exists where you know so many people that when, when there are so many people that are sick and so many people that are healthy and there's there's a huge disparity there th- there is no health care coverage that makes sense or or that works math wise where where there's affordable health care because there's more people that are fucked up than not yeah you know and and to me like this is a, a staple problem that that you know from a causality standpoint contributes to that that plague of our society in terms of everybody's sick and fucked up and constantly going to the doctor and has all these problems and 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 it starts with this yeah um so you know from i guess the takeaway i'm getting from you is that instead of shopping at whether it's whole foods traded like in any of those places is that find farmers markets and and or even more importantly small farms that are that are near you where you can go and and see or or kind of verify how they're farming and how they're raising and, and, and know what's in the food that you're getting and buy from them. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Because you're doing, you're, you're, you're fixing, uh, you're fixing things on a couple of different levels. One is like, you're going to love it, you know, go out and like visit the farm and get some nature in your life and like learn about your food, like get connected, go meet the animal that you're going to eat. Like there used to be, uh, you know, a reverence to food. When you like you took when two people sat down and broke bread together, like it it had value. Yeah. Um, and you know that farmer and rancher, like he he needs you. Like you're you are literally you are you're improving your food security, which I think is going to become a really big deal in in the future. Is knowing knowing that you can get your food, knowing that you can get clean nutrient dense food. That has a shitload of value. I mean, I, I saw it firsthand when this all this COVID shit went down. Um, we distribute, so we ship our direct consumer, our direct consumer business. We send, uh, we ship meat out of Denver. My nephew runs the warehouse down there. So a good friend of mine, he, he his family owns this business. I mean, this is a sweet warehouse. Like if you're like, like warehouses, this one's cool. <laughs> if you're so, in a warehouse porn, <laughs> if you're this in will blow your hair back. Man, it's an ammonia system. This thing's yeah. badass. But they have, they can literally, they, they can fit a thousand semi loads of protein in this place. Like it is huge. When COVID hits, like I was just down there at like the, perfect time and i look and i like, dude, i can see coast to coast in this place like there was literally probably a one semi load of protein left in that whole warehouse and they got resupplied you know before they completely ran out but that really i was like holy crap like you see these massive cities and we're all just living in the like the supply chain is just like semis coming and filling and refilling the second they stop Fuck, man, it's like, it's so fragile. Like, yeah. it's so centralized. And you, like, think what that looks like. Like, think if uh, think if something was to happen and, like, there's a bobble. Say it went three weeks. You know, it went that thing went two weeks. Say it went three weeks. Well, I have grocery stores. They're out in, like, two days. Yeah, you know, especially the, when people panic. They're out in fucking two hours. Dude, I mean, we saw it with toilet paper, right? Yeah. I mean, with, with a lot of things, yeah. honestly. I mean, even... A lot of the regulars, like the the you know meat is fucking gone. Yep. You know dairy is fucking gone. What what's interesting is uh, almost all of the uh, meatless products, the the vegan shit, yeah. like they're still yeah. stocked full of that shit. Yeah. You know people weren't buying it, uh, which I think is telling. You know, yeah. but um, but anyway, I mean, yeah, like it, the the quickness with which you realize, to your point, how fragile our our supply chain is, really with everything, but especially food, because. You know that that's going to um, Im- impact us the quickest. Uh, it was shocking. Yeah. Well, and I mean, if you're 
if you're if you're hungry, you only have one problem, right? And so I think that's like a, it's a it's a major thing. We've just we've gotten we've gotten too centralized. Yeah, and it's very efficient. Like dudes are making a shitload of money. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that the, the average farmer and rancher of every dollar spent, like you spend a dollar in the grocery store of that dollar, like anywhere from 10, only from 10 to 16 cents of that dollar actually makes it back to the farmer and rancher. Wow. I mean, agriculture, the debt in the ag industry is at an all time high. I think it was like $416 billion. Wow. Since 1980, I think we've gone from like one point. 1.3 million ranchers to like now we're at like 700,000. Like we lose eight, 17 to 18,000 ranchers a year and just go away or foreclosed on or, you know, sell out. Cause it's up. Like it's hot. It's tough. Yeah. Like it's mentally and physically, it's a, it's a challenging thing. And so why would the kids stick around, yeah. you know, to starve like ma and pa, yeah. you know, when and they can move to New York and get a tech job. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. 